Welcome back to The Breeding Predators. My name is Richard Eckhart. Today is May 29th, 2019. And I wrote an article yesterday that pertains to some of the heresy that the guys in the Covenant Eschatology Corporate Body View cult teach. Uh, namely, William Bell and Don K. Preston because they are the two uh, top dogs in Covenant Eschatology and they have a whole bunch of lackeys and minions that are also teaching Covenant Eschatology um, heresy. Uh, the doctrine that is in covenant eschatology uh, but it's don k preston and william bell who have really formulated the uh, heretical doctrine doctrine that is essential within covenant eschatology that we see today uh, max king in the 1970s and 1980s he was the one who uh, spearheaded this idea of a corporate body that went through a 40 year dying and rising process between the cross and 70 AD. And this alleged corporate body was then allegedly raised from the death of the old creation or the old age, uh, what, these guy, what these guys are calling the death. Uh, so it's really Max King who is the founder of the covenant eschatology cult. Uh, but it is William Bell and Don K. Preston, who joined forces with Max King and cultivated it, if you will. They, 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 they grew it into what it is today uh, through manipulating and twisting passages in God's Holy Scripture. I'm going to share a screenshot as well as read this article. And uh, in this article, Don talks about what he calls a, a, a spiritual separation death or a spiritual alienation death, that he says the false Jesus Christ of covenant eschatology died for a brief time uh, while Jesus was still, while their Jesus was still alive and hanging on a cross and before he actually died, Don K. Preston teaches that Jesus died a spiritual separation death or a spiritual alienation death. And Don K. Preston also says that this spiritual alienation death is the means of the atonement. Uh, but it gets really convoluted and, and confusing because uh, William Bell and Don K. Preston then extend this sign death of, of the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus and this spiritual alienation death and they make it into a 40 year death where they have a spirit body of Christ that is dying and rising for 40 years. And within this alleged spirit body of Christ, they allege that there is spirit blood that is being shed for 40 years. Uh, and, and this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the heresy and blasphemy that these guys are teaching. So I get right into this article here. And like I said, I'm gonna also share a screenshot Don K. Preston claims that the literal physical blood of Jesus was a sign of another spiritual reality. Preston and gang claim that an alleged spirit blood was shed in an alleged spirit body of Christ for 40 years. Preston has an alleged 40 year atonement process and at the end of this alleged process, the alleged corporate body of Moses is allegedly then fully changed and conformed into an alleged immortal, incorruptible corporate body of Christ that is allegedly then raised from the grave of the death of the old creation. By the way, this alleged corporate body of Moses allegedly came out from an alleged corporate body of spiritual alienation death in Adam where Adam is the alleged federal representative head of an alleged corporate body of spiritual alienation death, what these heretics are calling old creation death or old age death, or simply, quote, the death, end quote. This is why J.L. Vaughn created the covenant creation heresy around 2005. Vaughn knew that the only way that Max King's corporate body view of the resurrection in AD 70 would really work 
is if Adam was the first patriarch and priest in the brand new religion and nation of Israel, quote, in the beginning, end quote. These heretics interpret Genesis chapter one as myth, metaphor, and allegory that they say explains the creation of the nation of Israel among hundreds of thousands of years of pagan nations on a five billion year old earth before Adam allegedly became the first patriarch and priest of the brand new nation of Israel, quote, in the beginning, end quote. And of course, that is Genesis 1-1, the, the very first verse in the Bible. These guys twist and manipulate, and they say that the, uh, when it mentions the heavens and the earth, they, they uh, insist and claim that that is a code phrase for the nation of Israel. That's covenant creation. You see, if the alleged corporate body of spiritual alienation death in Adam was allegedly raised in AD 70 as the corporate spirit body of Christ, this is clearly universalism. Because if Adam was the first man ever on earth where we see death come upon all persons out from Adam and Eve, which which I adhere to. I certainly look at Adam and Eve as the very first humans ever on earth, but not the guys in covenant creation. Um, I'm going to read that again, but I just wanted to point out that you're either going to look at Adam and Eve as the very first humans on earth ever, or you're going to look at Adam and Eve as um, what can be called uh, theistic evolution, uh, where there's a five billion year old earth and there's hundreds of thousands of pagan uh, hundreds of thousands of years of pagan nations. Uh, but I do believe that Adam and Eve were the very first humans ever on earth and that all human, uh, humanity, uh, humankind, I believe that all persons, even today on earth, are directly out from Adam and Eve. I'm going to read that again. Because if Adam was the very first man ever on earth, we, where we see the death come upon all persons, out from Adam and Eve, then this corporate body of death and Adam that allegedly, allegedly changed into the corporate spirit body of Christ would be all persons in this alleged spiritual alienation death in Adam. So again, if Adam and Eve were not the very first two people on earth, which I believe, and if Adam and Eve were in a long line of humans on earth, and the nation of Israel was, was uh, brought into creation through Adam and Eve, that's, that's where this is going. Now, J.L. Vaughn knew that. J.L. Vaughn knew that if all persons out from Adam and Eve were in this alleged corporate body of spiritual alienation death, and this corporate body of spiritual alienation death changed into this corporate body of life in Christ, it's universalism. And that is exactly where the founder of covenant eschatology went, Max King. He adopted the inherent universalism that is in um, covenant eschatology. But J.L. Vaughn and Tim Martin and some other guys right around 2005, they, they wanted to get away from the universalism and they, they um, came up with this covenant creation. And today you're going to see a lot of covenant eschatology guys embrace covenant creation. You're going to see Tony Denton and Ward Fenley and Michael Miano and, and a whole bunch of other covenant eschatology guys who are simultaneously covenant creation heretics. And uh, the covenant eschatology heresy is going to lend itself to the covenant creation heresy as well as universalism. And although these guys would not want to admit this, it also lends itself to Israel onlyism. If you keep taking the uh, heretical and blasphemous doctrine that is in covenant eschatology uh, to its ends, you're going you're gonna to either come up with universalism or Israel onlyism, which these guys will really rarely talk about. Getting back to the article, if Jesus allegedly paid the price for this alleged spiritual alienation death out from Adam, 
that all persons in an alleged corporate body of spiritual alienation death in Adam would benefit from this alleged spiritual alienation substitution sacrifice of Jesus that Preston claims took place on the cross before his Jesus even died. But keep in mind that Preston also has an alleged 40-year atonement process after the cross. But if you make Adam be the federal representative head of the nation of Israel only, then this alleged spiritual alienation death that Adam allegedly experienced when he was allegedly kicked out of the garden could only ever be applied to Israel only. Then this alleged exclusive spiritual alienation death was only ever upon the nation of Israel, uh, allegedly. And that is exactly where J.L. Vaughn and Tim Martin went when they wanted to get away from the uh, universalism that Max King was teaching with covenant eschatology, um, uh, preterism, the covenant eschatology, corporate body view, preterism, heresy. Covenant creation ultimately leads to the heresy known as Israel onlyism, where only the nation of Israel was the beneficiary of the, quote, price that Jesus paid for Israel's spiritual alienation death, end quote. Since the alleged, quote, spiritual alienation death of Israel, end quote, was allegedly done away with in AD 70, and since the nation of Israel was allegedly fully saved in AD 70, then there is allegedly no salvation for anyone after AD 70. These Israel onlyism heretics claim that once the nation of Israel was saved, allegedly in AD 70, by, quote, the 40 year atoning work of Jesus, end quote, the alleged salvation story in the Bible for the nation of Israel stopped. And nobody has ever been saved after AD 70, allegedly. And that's Israel onlyism. And that's really where covenant creation ultimately goes. When you follow all of the rabbit trails, it goes, to, it goes directly to Israel onlyism. When you see that this death of Israel, this spiritual alienation death of Israel was taken away in AD 70, allegedly. So you either have universalism or you have Israel onlyism. When you follow through on both covenant eschatology and covenant creation. Covenant creation, by the way, is a form of covenant eschatology. So when you hear people who are uh, into covenant creation, covenant creation is covenant eschatology, but they look at the beginning, they look at the very beginning, like this chart that is behind me, you know, right here where it says Adam, they look at the beginning differently. They don't look at Adam as the very first man ever on earth. They would go to Adam and they would say that right back here there was hundreds of thousands of years of pagan nations in, on a five billion year old earth. So uh, covenant eschatology and covenant creation are the same Max King framework, uh, but covenant creation changes what is called protology, the study of the beginning of something. Right here where it says Adam, uh, covenant creation makes Adam be the very first patriarch and priest of the nation of Israel. And we haven't seen Don K. Preston or William Bell or some other guys come out and profess or claim that they are covenant creation yet. They haven't done that yet. They are still claiming that Adam is the first human ever. Um, but when you look at the universalism of what goes on with if everybody right here with Adam, if everybody is out from Adam in a spiritual alienation death and all humankind is in that, that body of flesh, just like this chart behind me shows, this, this body of flesh, well then if this body of flesh turns into the body of Christ, you know, right over here in AD 70, you have universalism because everybody in Adam that was spiritually alienated benefits from this 
alleged spiritual alienation death that Jesus died on a cross. So you have universal reconciliation in AD 70 where this alleged spiritual alienation death of Jesus benefited this corporate body of spiritual alienation death. Now that's where Max King went. J.L. Vaughn decided he wanted to get away from this universalism and he came up with the idea that when you go back here to Adam and you have, I'm trying my best to do this with what's behind me, but where I have this circle, this is a body of flesh, allegedly. This is what, this is what these guys call the flesh. Uh, everybody in Adam is the flesh that allegedly changes into the spirit. So J.L. Vaughn says, well, this body of flesh right here behind me, this body of flesh can't be all humankind that, that is benefiting from a spiritual alienation death of Jesus. So he goes back here to make Adam be the very first patriarch and, and priest and father, if you will, the, the, the fathers of the faith. He makes Adam be the very first person in what he asserts is God making a nation and religion of Israel on earth when Adam was in the garden, which by the way, they also say is the very first temple of Israel. They say the garden was the temple and, and we can get into a whole bunch of other stuff when it comes to temple theology at this point, but we'll leave that for future videos. If you truly follow all of the rabbit trails in the Max King cult, you will only ever end up with universalism or Israel onlyism. Getting back to Preston, Bell, and Gang. These covenant eschatology heretics teach that the alleged corporate body of Moses actually is the corporate body of Christ. As being only one body that went through an alleged 40 year conforming and transforming process, allegedly between the cross and AD 70. These heretics interpret such passages as Philippians 3.21 as being, quote, the vile body of the corporate body of Moses, end quote, that gets changed. They don't look at their own bodies as flesh bodies. They don't even begin to say that they are in the flesh because to them, in the flesh, if you look at this chart behind me, in the flesh to them is a mindset. It's a mindset of being in the flesh and they don't even look at themselves as being in the flesh, meaning their own personal biological, physical flesh body that incites to sin. You know, this is why I can get along with guys like Jeff Cunningham and some other guys who are futurists. I was a futurist for 15 years. Um, I do believe that we as individuals are in our personal, biological, physical flesh body on earth and we touch the world. Uh, we touch the world with our bodies and the, the flesh that we have incites to sin. Uh, and there's that, there's that um, you know, what it denotes when you talk about the flesh, your personal flesh, what it denotes is not only your, your, uh, your bend towards wanting to touch the world in sinful ways because you have your own personal flesh, but there is that nature. Um, a lot of people will, uh, they will essentially bust on the New International Version where it says the sinful nature, the sinful nature of man. Um, but there is that nature within man uh, that is corruption and depravity. Uh, and the very fact that each person has a biological, physical flesh body proves that out. Not that the physical flesh body that you have is inherently sinful or corrupt in itself. This is not Gnosticism in this respect. But we are incited to sin while we are alive in the world. Um, and we touch the world. Obviously, we touch the world with our personal, biological, physical flesh body. And the one thing that you really need to understand about covenant eschatology and, and pretty much one of the main heresies is when they hear body, they look at this corporate body. You know, behind me, there's this chart where you see this corporate body uh, right here, this, this circled area is this alleged corporate body of death uh, or a corporate body of flesh 
that in 70 AD right here allegedly change, changes into uh, a spirit body. So this right here is what they are calling the spirit realm. This right here is what they are calling the flesh realm. So they would say, look, you're not in the flesh if your mindset is back here where allegedly the death took place, the death of the old creation. So it's, it is a Gnosticism. It's a, it's a really twisted form of Gnosticism. And it's a, it's a deep esotericism where they are teaching you that you need to have a, a mindset of spirit. You need to be uh, allegedly assimilated into this spirit body that they say manifest right here in AD 70. They say this spirit body that was once this body. Now, Don, William Bell and Don K. Preston would say that this body right here is, is the body of Moses that is out from a body of death in Adam. So even though William Bell and Don K. Preston would have this alleged corporate body of death, they would say that within this particular body right here comes the body of Moses. And Don K. Preston has a really clever way of saying how he gets the body of Moses out from this, this larger uh, uh, body of death, if you will. He has a clever way of saying that it has to do with uh, uh, an eschatological faith. An eschatological faith that Adam had and was handed down to others. Uh, really twisted, really heretical and blasphemous. This whole, this whole thing is New Age Spiritism. It really is. You know, here's the flesh mindset. Here's the spirit mindset. Here's the flesh realm. Here's the spirit realm. It's Gnosticism. It's all about a, it's all about a mental ascension to a realm of living. And, it, and, it, and they totally deny that you have a physical flesh body that incites to sin. They, they, they only have a spirit. They, have, they say that a spiritual alienation death of Jesus is what paid the price. And then they turn that into a convoluted spirit body um, that, is, that is dying and rising with a, a, uh, a body of Moses. So this body of Moses is what they are saying is the same body as this spirit body of Christ. It's just that the body of Moses they allege needs to change into, conform into and transform into a spirit body. And then they are telling you that you need to be assimilated into this spirit body. It's, it's wicked. It's, it's absolutely wicked and vile, heretical and blasphemous to the core. Don K. Preston, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed of yourself and William Bell. I personally believe that William Bell is the brains behind it all. Uh, William Bell got together with Max King uh, and, and started adopting the, the, the Max King cult in the 80s uh, and all throughout the 80s. And it wasn't until the early 90s that Don K. Preston got involved. In 89 and 90 is when Don K. Preston first started espousing um, uh, the covenant eschatology heresy. But they really should be ashamed of themselves. They are shipwrecking the faith Shipwrecking the faith of people by teaching this heresy, this Gnosticism heresy of a, of a flesh mindset and a flesh realm and a spirit mindset and a spirit realm. It's, it's sick and twisted. And they, they have left Christianity. I'm telling you right now, they have left Christianity. I'm going to read that again. These covenant eschatology heretics teach, teach that the alleged corporate body of Moses actually is the corporate body of Christ as being only one body that allegedly went through an alleged 40-year conforming and transforming process between the cross and A.D. 70. These heretics interpret such passages as Philippians 3.21 as being, quote, the vile body of the corporate body of Moses that was allegedly changed. And here is Philippians 3.21. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. And that specifically has to do with those who were left alive and remaining on earth. Paul taught in 1 Thessalonians 4 and in 1 Corinthians 15. In both of those chapters in God's Holy Scripture, Paul taught about a change that would happen 
for individuals that were alive and remaining on earth. So this is what this is referring to. Paul is just going ahead with a consistent teaching about a change that would happen for those who are alive and remaining on earth. Um, we're not gonna get into that right now, but clearly there was a change of those alive and remaining on earth at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ when the general resurrection took place. I'm an individual body view preterist and I see that as taking place in AD 70, but I look at souls out of Sheol. I, I don't subscribe to biological, physical flesh bodies out of the ground, like a lot of, like some futurist people believe in. Um, but this is what you see when you see Sam Frost and, and Lance Conley and uh, uh, these other guys who are ex-preterists who have uh, went back to uh, futurism, uh, they are explicitly and, and, and decidedly teaching uh, personal, biological, physical flesh bodies out of the ground. I'm an individual body view preterist, so I do, I do see that the Lord's uh, second coming and the general resurrection was in AD 70, but I see individual personal souls out from Sheol, and I also see that those who are alive and remaining at that time, just like Paul talks about in uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15 and, and here uh, in uh, Philippians 3. I do see that those who were alive and remaining at the time of the second coming of the Lord, that they were changed and that they were caught up to be with those saints out from Sheol, uh, souls out from Sheol, persons out from Sheol. They were caught up to forever be with the Lord Jesus Christ in glory in heaven. Getting back to the article. William Bell and Don K. Preston radically twist scripture to make passages fit their, quote, corporate body view of the resurrection in AD 70, end quote, heresy. This heretical corporate body view was started by the Church of Christ minister, Max King, throughout the 1970s, and 1980s. These heretics are trying to hijack the Stone Campbell Scott Church of Christ movement, and they are trying to make the Church of Christ become preterist instead of it being a futurist movement. And here's a screenshot. Let me pull that up here. Notice what Preston says in this screenshot. First, he claims that the literal physical blood of Jesus was important in what he sees as an alleged 40-year atonement process. Then he claims that an alleged, quote, spiritual, aliena spiritual alienation death of Jesus, end quote, took place on the cross for a brief time and that, quote, the price was paid, end quote, even before Jesus actually died on the cross. And I'm going to read, it might be hard for you to see the screenshot here, but I'm going to read through it, and especially to highlight, I highlighted an area in yellow where Preston is saying that the price was paid for, uh, for, a, for an alleged spiritual alienation death that he says Jesus died briefly, just for a short time while he was still alive and hanging on a cross. Uh, so Don K. Preston is addressing Jeff Cunningham here and he says, uh, he says, Jeff, I don't mock the blood of Christ. It is precious, it is my life. Which he does mock the blood of Jesus and he's only, he's only using the literal blood of Jesus, by the way, to be a sign of an alleged 40-year death. It's, you know, the blood of Jesus is this sign of spirit blood in a spirit body that these heretics are teaching. So you really got to watch Don K. Preston. He'll come out and say something, but he knows behind what he is saying, he knows that he has what these guys have as deeper esoteric knowledge that only, only the adepts, only the top dogs in covenant eschatology 
know all of the ins and outs of covenant eschatology. So they come out and say one thing, but they keep their deeper esoteric knowledge hidden. So again, he says, Jeff, I do not mock the blood of Christ. It is precious. It is my life. You are failing to see that the physical sacrifice was necessary and that it was most assuredly and that it most assuredly was and is applied spiritually. You know full well that the physical liquid blood of Jesus is not applied to your heart, which is not a physical reality. Correct? How is physical blood applied to the non-physical thing, Jeff? You see what Don K. Preston is doing here? He's got uh, sophistry. That's all he has. He's doing this 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 sophistry game of um, of, of he's just he, he, he's playing word games right here. I believe that the physical, literal blood of Jesus Christ is applied to me. And then these guys start twisting like crazy. You know, oh, how can you drink his blood? You know, you got David D. Gates going up against uh, some people right now. Uh, David D. Gates showed up on Facebook recently, and he, he's just a minion. He's a lackey of William Bell and Donkey Preston. He has the same old arguments that all of these other guys have, but he thinks he's he thinks he's pretty sharp and clever. But he's doing the same thing. Can you, you know, are you drinking the real blood of Jesus? And you got Steve Bazden mocking the blood of Jesus when he says, "Show me this vat or this pool of the blood of Jesus Christ." Because I could go dip myself in it. I can go, I could go uh, swim in this blood of Jesus that you guys are talking about that was literal. This is sick and twisted, people. I'm telling you right now. It was the literal physical blood of Jesus that was shed for the taking away of sin on the cross in AD 31. Some people say AD 33, AD 31. That's not the point. But it was the literal physical blood of Jesus that was shed. And how you are miraculously placed in Christ is the key to understanding how the literal physical blood of Jesus is applied to you personally. Because when you become miraculously, miraculously placed in the personal death of Jesus on the cross, you are automatically miraculously placed in his burial, his resurrection, and even his, his ascension. So you have what is called relational identity. Uh, and this relational identity has to do with the already but not yet. I'm in Christ. I've been placed in his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension. That's my lot. That's my reality because of God the Holy Spirit coming to dwell personally in me. You know, God the Holy Spirit, three persons in the Holy Blessed Trinity yet still God. Well, God, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in me. And I am miraculous, miraculously placed in Christ. But I'm not home yet. I'm not in glory in heaven just yet. So this is the already but not yet. Getting back to the screenshot from Don. He says, or do you believe that your heart, the sentience of your being, is a physical thing. Perhaps you should read Hebrews 10, 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Jeff, how is the heart, the non-physical heart, the seat of man sprinkled from an evil conscience. You don't believe that your literal physical blood pump or heart is your heart that is sprinkled from an evil conscience, do you? That physical heart has no conscience. Does it, Jeff? Please answer. So again, you have sophistry right here. You have wordplay. These guys are trying to protect their spiritual alienation death of their false Jesus Christ, and they do not have the literal blood of Jesus as the means and the, the literal, biological, physical, flesh, personal body of Jesus as the means of the atonement. They don't. They say it's part of a 40-year atonement, but they do not say that the atonement was on the cross in the literal blood and the literal body of Jesus. They deny that. And that's heresy. That's blasphemy. When you talk with Christians all across the world, uh, for 2,000 years that lift up 
the means of the atonement. And they would say, tell me about the blood of Jesus that was shed. If you were to ask a Christian that, tell me about the blood of Jesus. A, a, a real deal Christian would say it was the physical, literal blood of Jesus that was shed for the taking away of sin on the cross. And if you were to say to a real deal Christian, tell me about the body of Jesus that was given, they would say it was the literal, biological, physical flesh body of Jesus that was given as a death sacrifice on the cross. It's that simple. Once you leave that, you're leaving Christianity, and that's exactly what William Bell and Don K. Preston have done. They say that these are mere signs of deeper spiritual realities of a 40-year atonement. That was just a prompt on my phone for a low battery if you saw me coming up and pointing. Getting back to the screenshot from Don K. Preston. Now you deny, this is to Jeff Cunningham, now you deny that Jesus was separated from the Father, yet Jesus said the Father had forsaken him. Quote, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, that's from Psalm 22, and Don K. Preston and William Bell, they bank a lot on that particular scripture right there. And there's a, there's, a whole, um, there's a whole bunch of people, essentially, uh, and, and uh, an ideology, if you will, that Psalm 22 should never be taken just from the beginning of Psalm 22, but it should be looked at as a whole, that when Jesus would have quoted to the people in front of him, Israelites, um, and, and Roman centurions, but to the Israelites, when he would have started quoting Psalm 22, uh, and this is my belief, that Jesus would have then been giving a clue to who he was. Because when you read all of Psalm 22, you clearly find out that David, who wrote Psalm 22 uh, in a prophetic sense, you clearly find out that the person in the beginning of Psalm 22 who was crying out, my God, why have you forsaken me? Later on, it goes to say that God, God the Father has not forsaken and he has heard the cry of the one who was crying out in the beginning of Psalm 22. So Jesus would start reciting Psalm 22 and in the Israelite uh, idealism or the Israelite mind, those people who were right in front of him, uh, they would have understood. Ah, and maybe not even right away, but we do have the testimony of scripture, praise God, we have the testimony of scripture through Israelite disciples of Christ who went out and changed the world. And uh, uh, certainly not pointing to Israel only, by the way, because I, I, I look to Cornelius as an Italian uh, who was stationed in Judea, and uh, I do see uh, the vision with Peter in Acts, and uh, I think there were explicitly Israelite disciples of Jesus, but I think that they went out into the world and they changed the world, praise God, they did. Uh, and we today, as non-Israelites on, on earth, are beneficiaries of what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross in his blood, in his literal physical blood that was shed for the taking away of sin on the cross. I'm a beneficiary of what the Lord Jesus Christ did in his blood and his literal physical blood is applied to me. It's applied to my heart. It's applied to all of my being, my soul, my spirit, my body, I am in Christ and the literal physical blood of Jesus is what paid the price for me, for my corruption, my sin, my personal death. And I get to live forever with the Lord Jesus Christ in glory in heaven because of what he accomplished on the cross. So the highlighted area on this screenshot and pay particular attention to this, this highlighted area right here says, that separation only lasted a brief time while he was on the cross. Thus he could, he could then say in full comfort, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. The separation was over. He had paid the price. That's what Don K. Preston says. 
So allegedly, Don K. Preston is banking on a spiritual alienation death that was just a brief time on a cross. And Don K. Preston is saying that the price was paid by the spiritual alienation death for this right here, this, this alleged body. You see this body right here? Don K. Preston says the price needs to be paid for this body of death right here. I'm going to read that again. I'm going to read these two paragraphs, as a matter of fact. Now, you deny that Jesus was separated from the Father, yet Jesus said the Father had forsaken him. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That separation only lasted a brief time while he was on the cross. Thus, he could then say in full comfort, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. The separation was over. He had paid the price. So see what Don K. Preston is doing here when he says the separation lasted only for a brief time while he was on the cross. Jesus died. Jesus had the death that paid the price. But then he was allegedly made alive from that death while he was still alive and hanging on the cross. Imagine that. A death and some type of weird resurrection or restoration of Jesus back to life took place while Jesus was still alive on the cross before this false Jesus Christ of Don K. Preston even died. Because that's why Don K. Preston then says, thus he could then say in full comfort. Don K. Preston is alleging that this short time that Jesus died, he was separated from God the Father, but he came back to life before he died a biological death. This is what Don K. Preston is teaching. He came back to life and he was, he was resurrected and restored to life. And he was reconciled to God the Father. And that's why Don K. Preston is saying, Thus he could then say in full comfort, that's what Don K. Preston means right there, that he's, he's allegedly alive again and restored. And he could now talk with God the Father again. And before he even died is what Don K. Preston is, is alleging here, before he died a biological physical flesh body death. Don K. Preston is asserting that in full comfort, now Jesus can say to God the Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Because he was dead, he got somehow spiritually resurrected and spiritually restored and spiritually made, while, uh, made alive while he was allegedly still on the cross, alive hanging. And then for this brief time, he's restored to fellowship with God, allegedly. This is what Don K. Preston is teaching. He's allegedly restored to life. And he could say to God the Father, with a full assurance of relationship, allegedly, into your hands I commend my spirit. No. No. This is all heresy that Don K. Preston puts together to try and prop up this spiritual alienation death that he says Jesus died. But it didn't stop there. Don K. Preston has a 40-year atonement process. So this spiritual alienation death that he says Jesus died, that's not the end of it. Even though he says right in the screenshot, the price was paid. Right there he says it in the screenshot. The separation was over, he had paid the price. But then Don K. Preston kicks in a 40 year, alleged 40 year, dying and rising reciprocity process, that Max King formulated by the way. That's, that's Max King's uh, uh, doing. He's the one who came up with this 40-year dying, rising reciprocity. As a matter of fact, that's, that's a term that Max King coined. Dying, rising, reciprocity. So that this body right here, this body of death, this flesh corporate body can allegedly change into this, this, this other body over here, this spirit body. It's wicked. It is wicked, wicked, wicked to the core what these guys are doing. And Don K. Preston ends in his screenshot here by saying, uh, Jeff, did Adam experience spiritual death? Alienation from God as a result of sin, yes or no? So this is one of the, uh, this is one of the tricks of Don K. Preston. He, he rails at somebody with a vitriol and an anger and a hatred. He rails at somebody. And then he has two or three questions at the end of it uh, that he is gonna insist that you answer. And when you don't answer those questions, he comes back with, Hey, you didn't 
You didn't even bring forth one keystroke. You didn't touch my questions, you know. What's your problem? Um, so he's banking right here, uh, knowing that in the Church of Christ and a lot of, um, a lot of denominations, a lot of denominationalism uh, throughout the past uh, 2,000 years, if you will, um, even though the Roman Catholic Church had a stranglehold on, on people's lives for a long time. Uh, but this, this uh, spiritual death idea is something that Don K. Preston will time and time and time again drive home. He has to drive home this spiritual alienation death idea because this body right here that he has dying a spiritual alienation death, you know, you got Adam, right here you got Adam. Adam brings forth this alleged corporate body of spiritual alienation death. Out of this body, Don K. Preston says, comes the body of Moses. And the body of Moses is what they say is actually the same thing as the body of Christ. Not two different bodies, but the body of Moses is the body of Christ, they, they teach. So Don K. Preston has to have a, an alienation death, a spiritual alienation death, because he's not talking about human beings going through their own personal death. You know, you go back here to the death of Adam, which is, the, every, everybody's arguing, what is the death of Adam? Um, these guys are really trying to pump home this idea of a spiritual alienation death that goes on right back here. Don, Don K. Preston's coming out with a book, as a matter of fact, about the death of Adam. And uh, you could waste your money. You could get involved in a, in a cult. You can get involved in more heresy and blasphemy by buying that book and believing what Don K. Preston teaches about this spiritual alienation death right back here of Adam that brought forth this alleged corporate body of death. And out of this corporate body, allegedly there's a body of Moses that is the body of Christ that allegedly changes into a spirit body. That's exactly what these guys are teaching when it comes to the death of Adam. But I would recommend that you save your money and you start understanding the heresy and blasphemy that these guys are teaching. Getting back to this article, we'll wrap up the article here. And I'm going to read this, uh, this, this paragraph. And then we'll wrap this article up here. I'm going to read this paragraph again that led to the screenshot that I was showing you. Notice what Preston says in this screenshot. First, he claims that the literal physical blood of Jesus was important in what he sees as a 40-year atonement process. Then he claims that an alleged spiritual alienation death of Jesus took place on the cross for a brief time. And that, quote, the price was paid, end quote. Even before Jesus actually died on the cross. Preston and gang really can't make up their minds on exactly what is the means of their heretical atonement. The means of their heretical atonement. I say that the literal physical blood of Jesus and the literal biological physical flesh body of the Lord Jesus Christ was the means of the one and only atonement that took place on the cross. The finished works of Jesus Christ on the cross the price was paid on a cross with the literal blood of Jesus and the literal biological, physical, flesh body of Jesus. The atonement was complete. The price was paid. Sin was atoned for on a cross. God's grace was full and free after that. Forgiveness of sin was available full and free after the cross. There was no waiting 40 years for some alleged 40-year atonement. Scripture couldn't be more clear on that, that God's grace was full and free on the cross and that forgiveness was now available. Forgiveness of sin was now available because of the literal physical blood of Jesus and the literal biological physical flesh body of Jesus and what the Lord Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross. Again, Preston and gang really can't make up their minds on exactly what is the means of their heretical atonement. They will say whatever they must say to try and appease whoever they are discussing things with at any particular time. William Bell, Don K. Preston, Holger Neubauer, and Steve Bazden are the four main guys who are trying to hijack the Stone Campbell Scott Church of Christ movement. The really big problem is that none of these guys can agree on the essentials. That is a pretty per a peculiar thing that is going on. These guys are teaching different things. 
from one guy to the next between these four guys, they come out with different heretical teachings. And they really don't care. They just, they just keep going on the, the path that they're on. And, uh, you know, Bazden, Steve Bazden came out with this idea of spirit blood. And Don K. Preston jumped on it. And, and now this is what they teach, spirit blood and the spirit body. And, uh, um, you know, Holger Neubauer is teaching that the price was not paid on a cross, that, that Jesus went to uh, Sheol and for three days he was spiritual alienated. So you got Preston, who needs to have a debate with Holger Neubauer. Preston says the price was paid even before Jesus died on the cross, which gets confusing because they say Jesus died a spiritual alienation, a spiritual alienation death before Jesus died a, a biological, physical, flesh, body death. But Preston has that done and completed on the cross. And they have Jesus in some type of weird spiritual resurrection. He has, Don K. Preston has Jesus resurrected in some weird spiritual resurrection while Jesus is alive on the cross. Holger Neubauer says, no, 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 no. Jesus was spiritual alienated when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But that lasted for three days. This spiritual, this alleged spiritual alienation death lasted for three days. So even within covenant eschatology, the four main guys, they can't agree. It's one big mess. The really big problem is that none of these guys can agree on the essentials. You get different stories from different guys at different times, and even Preston will change his doctrine on a whim at any given time to try and stuff some new doctrine into an alleged, quote, covenant eschatology systematic theology, end quote. If the, quote, price was paid on the cross, end quote, with an alleged, quote, spiritual alienation death of Jesus before he actually died, end quote, as Preston is claiming, well then why is there a need for an alleged 40-year atonement process where, quote, spirit blood in a spirit body of Christ, end quote, is allegedly being shed for 40 years in an alleged 40-year atonement process. And for all that matters, why is there a need for Jesus to die in his biological, physical, flesh body? Why couldn't, his, why couldn't he have come down from the cross and just ascended, ascended to heaven? And, and at that point, Don K. Preston teaches that the biological, physical, flesh body was burned up and divested and destroyed, which is heresy, by the way. More heresy, these guys teach. But see, Jesus didn't really need to die on the cross biologically, according to Don. He has the price paid. Spiritual alienation, death, price paid. Jesus could have been brought down from the cross. Jesus could have ascended to heaven. This alleged heretical burning up of his body, divesting and destroy. Don calls it divest and destroy. And then... They also teach that a corruptible man, Jesus, was changed into God at that time. They say that Jesus, their heretical Jesus Christ that was corruptible, entered the Holy of Holies and he became God. That's what they teach. They teach that Jesus became God when he went into the Holy of Holies, allegedly, when his biological, physical flesh body allegedly burned up. That's sick. That is sick and twisted. And again, Don K. Preston, you should be ashamed of yourself. And William Bell, you should be ashamed of yourself. It's sick and twisted. These guys will say and do whatever is necessary for, the, necessary for them to stay true to Max King's to Max King's heretical corporate body view of the resurrection in AD 70. That's Max King, that's Max King's, um, uh, that's his baby to be able to say that a corporate body of spiritual alienation death was resurrected in AD 70. That's the whole heresy. That's, that's covenant eschatology in one phrase. This, this alleged corporate body of spiritual alienation death was allegedly raised from the death of old creation and became 
allegedly the body of Christ. That, that's the whole covenant eschatology heresy in a nutshell, and it's sick and twisted. So again, I'm going to read that. These guys will say and do whatever is necessary for them to stay true to Max King's heretical corporate body view of the resurrection in AD 70, where an alleged corporate body of spiritual alienation death was allegedly raised from an alleged spiritual alienation old creation death to become the alleged corporate spirit body of Christ that allegedly manifest in creation in AD 70 as, quote, the temple of God in creation. This is how these heretics claim that they see, quote, the presence of God that was allegedly lost when Adam, right back here, this is how these heretics, this is how these heretics claim that they see, quote, the presence of God that was allegedly lost when Adam was allegedly kicked out of the garden, end quote, what these guys are calling spiritual alienation death, or the death of the old creation, or simply the death. Um, this, is how these, this is how these heretics claim that they see the presence of God that was allegedly lost when Adam was allegedly kicked out of the garden, allegedly become restored to creation, right here in 70, they said, through, quote, the spirit body of Christ, the spirit body. They don't have Jesus Christ as a human being in glory in heaven right now. They don't have that. They have their corruptible Jesus Christ divest his body and turn into a, a, a pure Logos spirit entity that they say he was before he took on corruption and became a corruptible human being for 40 years and just appeared in corruptible human flesh for 30 years. So, so they say that he divested and destroyed his body. He entered the Holy of Holies. Uh, he became God again. And this is this ethereal Gnostic view of the spirit body of Christ that these guys are saying you need to be assimilated into. You need to be merged into. You need to get water baptized by William Bell or Holger Neubauer or Steve Baisden. Get water baptized by these guys so that you can get assimilated into this alleged spirit body. These guys are sick. Look, this is all about mental ascension and special esoteric knowledge from these alleged special teachers like Preston Bell, Vaughn, Curtis, Sullivan, Fenley, Baisden, Neubauer, Rogers, Watson, etc. It is new age spiritism, plain and simple. These guys teach that you must be assimilated into this spirit body of Christ that allegedly restored God's presence in creation in AD 70. This quote, being assimilated into a spirit body, end quote, is all about mental ascension and intellectual gymnastics. It's about ascending. It's about a mental ascension. That sounds a lot like New Age Spiritism. A mental ascension to become God. They absolutely deny that God the Holy Spirit is the deposit, the personal deposit that guarantees an individual's personal inheritance and glory. They all claim that they all have already arrived at perfection immortality, glory, incorruption, because they all claim that they are allegedly assimilated into this alleged, this alleged spirit body of Christ that allegedly manifest God's presence in creation, creation in AD 70. They have no need for God the Holy Spirit because they allege that they literally have become God. By allegedly stepping into the alleged Holy of Holies, that is the spirit body of Christ. That is allegedly the temple of God in the new creation that was allegedly manifest in AD 70. It is an alleged awakening of mankind. This is where Max King is at with his uh, spiral dynamics. Right here in AD 70, what William Bell and Don K. Preston are essentially teaching is an awakening of mankind. The flesh realm, they say, changed into the spirit realm. It is an alleged awakening of mankind from the flesh mindset of the old creation to the spirit mindset of the new creation. 
and you must allegedly become assimilated into this alleged spirit body. In order to be able to, quote, see, end quote, the alleged, quote, spirit body reality, I'm gonna pick this video up in just a little bit because the computer, the computer uh, shut down. Uh, so I'm gonna make a short video after this one that is gonna wrap up, and I was close to being done with the article anyway, but I'm going to do a short video that is gonna wrap up this article. So thanks for watching. There will be a short video after this one that I'm gonna post right after this video. Um, blessings, catch up soon enough.